What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Garrett. I'm a seven-figure Amazon seller showing you guys how you can make a living off Amazon as well. In today's video, we're going to be talking about back-to-school sourcing. Back-to-school is the time frame when parents and kids start to get ready for that back-to-school season, right? Late July, early September, mid-September is when it starts to heat up. And that's when a lot of attention is going to be an increased demand is going to be on products all surrounding back to school, whether it be backpacks, whether it be pencils and notebooks or, or just clothes that kids are wanting to stock up on to get ready for that new school year. There's a lot of opportunity to take advantage of this increased demand if we are able and knowledgeable enough to source proactively and have these sorts of items ready and available for when the FBA consumers are looking to purchase. And so that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video, how to be looking for this, these items, how to qualify them, and how to take advantage of this increased demand. So stick around for the video and enjoy. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about back-to-school sourcing. And if you have any sort of presence on social media, whether it be Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, etc., You've probably already heard people start to mention back to school, right? And now we rec we're recording this video in late June. And so what does that mean logistically for us as we're running our Amazon businesses, right? If you think about when back to school happens, right, people start buying things for back to school, whether it be notebooks or pencils or new shoes or whatever the case may be, probably around sort of like that August, September time frame. Right? And if we plan accordingly and start to source proactively, just as we would for any other season, right? whether it be Thanksgiving, Christmas, etc., we can make a whole lot of money taking advantage of this increased demand for particular items. Now, the question is, and the point of this video, is how do we find where these back-to-school opportunities may come? Right? Keep a Product Finder, as you can see in my screen, allows us to really start to dig into where these back to school items may arise, right? And there's gonna be a specific way we're going to use to actually dig into these back to school items, right? We can start with any sort of nominal, obvious back to school item, right? In this case, we're gonna use a backpack, right? We can all agree that backpacks are probably one of the biggest back to school items, right? Obviously, as a kid, a lot of people get new backpacks for school for their new school year, right? So they're going to be looking for backpacks, right? Whether or not we can actually find a backpack that's profitable is not necessarily as important as doing research and identifying other sellers who are sourcing in the same sort of way, right? I'm not necessarily interested in finding a specific backpack that I can make money on. I'm more interested in finding sellers who I know are doing outreach or doing, I know are doing sourcing from similar sources and likely is the case that they're going to be identifying other potential opportunities that we can now take advantage of in a more efficient manner, right? So obviously we searched backpack. This is going to be just a text filter. So this, the results here are all items in the Amazon catalog that have backpack in the title, right? 2.3 million products is far too many to sift through so we'll narrow it down by a simple nike brand search that brings us down to 2300 i want to narrow that down even more so let's use a sales rank filter of we'll call it uh a hundred thousand in the past was that hundred or a million hundred thousand in the past 90 days 69 backpacks so if we search in here right we go to our products we're going to have 69 70 backpacks that are less than a hundred thousand sales rank and in the brand Nike, right? And now you'll notice right here in my little pop-up here on the bottom right, keep a chart, we can see last year around that November, September time, or I guess September time frame, the sales rank drops and the price increases. So this is the particular activity that I'm looking for, right? We can click into this particular product listing and see that exact um, uh, act. Hey, quick commercial break. I appreciate you guys supporting and following the channel. If you are enjoying this particular video, which I'm assuming you are if you're still watching it to this point, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Scroll down, hit that subscribe button. Helps me out, helps the channel out. Let's get back to the content activity. This right here is what we're interested in. Sales rank drops, price shoots up to 149. Goodness, goodness, goodness. That's what we're looking for. Now, I'm not necessarily, like we said before, interested in this particular product listing. 
right? That's irrelevant. Obviously, we can look for this particular product, right? We can go track Google, see if we can buy it anywhere. Uh, look, doesn't look like we can, right? That's not super surprising. What I am more interested in, and the power of Keepa and the power of the buy box rotation, is I can identify the sorts of sellers that were selling this particular item in this time frame. And now, because of that, I can make a few deductions. Deduction one is that because they have sold a what we deem as a seasonal related product in the given time frame of our interest, we can assume that these sorts of sellers are going to be doing the same sort of research coming and approaching this next back to school season, which we're approaching. That's deduction one. Deduction two is that because, again, they're doing this sort of research, they are probably smart sellers sourcing from the same sorts of stores, and whether or not we can find back-to-school items in their storefront, there's likely other opportunities embedded in their research that their team has found that our team has not, and that's the key. Those two items, those two points, are going to be very, very powerful as we continue along on our sourcing. right? And so if we kind of scroll back out here, we can go... Um, right now we're in June, so if we kind of map back here, so we got one month, two months, three months, four months, five months, six months, seven months, eight months, nine months, about 10 months ago is that sort of time of interest. So if we go into data, buy box statistics, go to 365, which is the, the past year, we can start to identify sellers who are on this particular product in that nine or 10 month time frame, right? And really the sellers we're interested in are A, sellers who are selling at that inflated price, B, sellers who have last won the product, last won the buy box in our ideal time frame, and C, sellers who have a smaller review count that signifies that they are likely buying these products online arbitrage. And this is one seller that stands out, selling at 111, um, 59 reviews, so a smaller probably OA seller, and selling nine months ago. Right, this is another one, sale authority, 111, 57, 8 months. So these are two sellers that we can automatically click into and start to monitor. And we can tell pretty clear and pretty quickly what sorts of products they're buying, right? A lot of Stanley, a lot of Jordan. And so it's pretty obvious, right, just from initially being in their storefront that they're likely a back to school or an OA seller buying a lot of these products from retail storefronts and, and things are online storefronts and things like that, right? Just kind of doing some quick research through this storefront. This, nothing looks super, super interesting in terms of back to school, right? No pencils, notebooks, that sort of thing. No backpacks, no shoe, a lot of shoes, but nothing that we deem heavily, heavily back to school. Now we can proceed a couple different ways. So what I would do is I would create a folder on our, on our favorites tab up here, label it back to school sellers and start to uh, bookmark and, and favorite these links, right? The link of the storefront, which would be um, this one uh, right here. Favorite this, put it in back to school storefronts folder and just keep tabs on them, right? Go back and check every week, every couple weeks, especially as we approach back to school season. And I would sh assume some different items may pop up, whether they be backpacks, whether they be, you know, Nike clothes that are all that demand is going to increase and the price is going to increase when we approach the next couple months. Now that's just one seller, right? We can continue the same sort of research. QZ Rare Products, 124, eight months ago, 113 reviews. It's another seller that we would be interested in, right? Click into their storefront. Um, and we can, now this is a, a bit of a different scenario, right? This is going to be probably a lot of Costco, BJ, Sam's Club sorts of products, right? These are a lot of products that you would see going in any of those stores. But again, another storefront we can favorite, put in our back to school. And the net of all of this is going through these storefronts is always going to be more efficient than going out to Nike.com or any of these sites and trying to go one by one and finding those opportunities. Starting with the Amazon data, which we have here, we can qualify based on obviously Amazon being out of stock, the price, the competition, the, the, the velocity, all these sorts of things. And so reverse engineering our connections from a product to a source or a site are always going to be more efficient in terms of finding new opportunities and surrounding ourselves right, by using an entry product, an, uh, um, an entry product 
that connects us to sources or uh, sellers that we have a vested interest in, in interest in is going to be a very efficient and productive and proactive way to source not only back to school products but whether it be Thanksgiving or Christmas or um, Easter or just normal everyday sourcing in our Amazon businesses. That's going to be it for today's video. Guys, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give the video a like, share it with a friend who is interested in Amazon, and we will see you in the next one.